Thank you, Gabi. Thank you, Geraldine. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Melina. Okay, uh, you are five. Let's wait a few more minutes. Oops, Gabi Soto is having problems. Okay, guys, uh, one question, a person question. Are all of you from Pulacan? Thank you, Gabi. Welcome again. Okay. How's the weather, Diana, in Wasabe? You can use the microphone. No, Diana. Good evening. Go ahead, please. Uh, okay. Can you hear me? Uh huh. Can you hear me? Uh, okay. Uh, it's okay. It's raining. Uh, Ivan Oveso called me uh, a few minutes ago, and he was having trouble to connect because uh, he's in Sinaloa de Leyva. If he was. Um, the weather is not okay over there. Okay. Gabby, I gave you the microphone, but it, the, the program tells me you're using a tablet. So, but you're not using a headset, are you? Uh, hello, I'm not using a tablet. Well, <laughs> the, the program told me you were using a tablet, but anyway. Okay, welcome. No, here I am. Okay. Thank you. Jorge, welcome. Melina, I'm going to give you the microphone as well to give it to Nadia, Yeldin, Jorge, and Diana Paola. You can use it if you want it. If you don't use it, uh, please mute it. Hello, good night, everybody. Good evening, Jorge. Okay, thank you. I'm giving the microphone to Yeldin, Nadia, Diana Paola. Yeldin, go, you ha go ahead, please. Very low, Yeldin. Can you hear me? Okay, now it's good. Hello. Hi. Okay. Uh, I I, hello, I say good night to all of you, and I hope that everybody's okay about the storm. And good evening. And um, well, I I was expecting more from from the storm, but I think everything is fine now. I guess it is I over. Think. I mean, uh, for example, uh, yeah, I think. Hmm, is uh, I don't know. I was watching the the news. The weather reports, yes, and it says it is okay now. Is it? I'm, I'm in Culiacan and it's okay here. Well, I check in the, in the internet and it, they say that maybe at midnight we'll be entered from Topolobampo, or Mochi, maybe. But from Culiacan, it's far away now. Okay, Melina, can you listen to me, Melina? Uh, I guess Diana Paola is having problems with uh, perhaps a headset or microphone. Thank you, Hasiel. Thank you, Diana Paola. You only can listen to, you cannot speak, you cannot use a microphone. Thank you, Diana. Okay. Well, Diana Paola, if you, don't, if you don't need the microphone, could you please mute it? Nadia Sosueta, you can use a microphone or you can mute it. Thank you, Nadia. Diana Paola, I guess it is not working, but it is on. Anyway, okay, guys, uh, as I usually say, I love respecting the ones who are on time. Perhaps the other ones are having problems. Uh, 
the rain and the, and the weather. But anyway, here we are and let's start. And the first question is about this piece of software. Do you like it? Use a microphone. I said you had a microphone. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I really like uh, that website because uh, it can help us a lot doing some exercise, exercises uh, to our students and it can help us really. Okay. It can really help us. Mm -hmm. you. Do you use it with, do you use any exercise with your students, Hasiel? Okay, that's great. Anyone else have you used the exercises to design of EducaPlay? I mean, have you used them with your students? Remember, you had a microphone open. You can use it. Not yet, Geraldine. None you have in Diana. Why? Go ahead, Yarlin. Well, um, I haven't because my program is so expensive. So I, uh, I can, uh, I don't know how to say, I can't uh, put something else in this week. Maybe the next week I am going to be able to do it. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm sure you are looking at the message Diana wrote. Can, I mean, do I need to have internet in the classroom in order to use, in order to, can I, do, I, do I need internet in the classroom, in the school, in the kindergarten, in order to use it with my students? As I told you last week, maybe, I don't know, maybe about two weeks ago, uh, the idea to have the blog is to assign some exercises for homework so students can do it at home. And as I said, if you are using the blog only for your class, it's going to be safe for your students and also parents are going to be glad to uh, for the kids to be using this uh, 21st century tools. Um, sometimes, yes, uh, for example, we need to, to use uh, some of these tools and the exercises we create with them in the classroom. I'm not sure uh, because I haven't used it uh, in the classroom for a long time, but I guess we can download the exercises and then we can use them in the classroom. I'm not sure. Yes. We need to check that. So you can go to Educa Play and download your uh, ex the exercise you created and try to use it, try to see it and do the exercise without internet. You can uh, unplug your connection. And I guess it is possible. But anyway, let's continue. I want to tell you something, some things about your creations, some observations. This is for helping you not for criticizing you. For example, uh, you already did this exercise that is on the screen and you gave some advice to the creator and I don't know, maybe sometimes we forget uh, very simple things like this. Sometimes we create the exercises uh, for us, I mean we do not think on all of our, our students. For example, every classroom has good students and 
some students that have problems, I'm not, I don't want to use the word bad students, no. They are students, they, they don't have the same uh, competences, they don't have the same skills, they don't have the same knowledge. So sometimes we forget uh, these students and we create the exercise, or we create the exercises for um, only one student and it could be the one I have in mind, I don't know, maybe not even thinking on a student, thinking on myself doing it, but we need to create activities and think on our students. What about this one? Can you answer this, that question? Isn't it better to do this exercise on a photocopy? Go ahead, please, Nadia. Um, yes, actually, I do think it's better to do it in a photocopy because it's a really, I think it's a really simple exercise to do. So I, I don't think it's necessary to apply it, like, in this type of... Exercise. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Hello? Yes, Nadia, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, Hello? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Oh, I was saying, um, I don't think it's necessary to use it this way. I think it's better if you use it in a photocopy. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on, guys. Don't be shy. Ivan, I'm giving you the microphone. You can use it whenever you want it. Okay, guys, sometimes, as I said, uh, we use technology in a kind of um, like a mirror from the face-to-face -face classroom. And if you use it, I mean, if you do exercises this way, well, you spend a lot of time because most of the exercises are time-consuming. And if I... If I do this exercise, for example, with, uh, I mean, using technology in the classroom, in the internet, I mean, it's not, uh, it's better to do it on a piece of paper or even using post-its and as a memory game uh, played in the, in the classroom, it's going to be more interesting, more productive for my students. The idea to use technology is to do things you cannot do in the classroom. For example, when I play any conversation that is on the lesson, not everyone is understanding the lesson. Some students need to listen to the conversation maybe four, five, ten times. Not exactly that. That the best students that one or two times is, is not for them. So we need to create this kind of a tools in order to help those students who do not have the same qualities, the same competences, as I said. Yes, let's go to the next one. This is a good one, but I guess, in my opinion, is a lot of, a lot of uh, vocabulary items. And as somebody said, as somebody, some, one of you wrote, it would be better, instead of uh, giving this kind of uh, clues, for example, I don't know, combine it with another exercise. Actually, this is something we are going to do before we finish this uh, eight weeks course, to give you ideas to to use the, the exercise you are creating, I mean, like a chain. I'm going to use this exercise on a look at play to promote some uh, practice on vocabulary, uh, I don't know, acquisition, for example. But I'm going to use the bulky for listening comprehension. And then I'm going to use different exercises, Calamio for reading exercises, reading comprehension, etc. So the idea is to... Uh, use the tools, but uh, related to a, a single topic. You know what a, they call it in Spanish, unidad didáctica. Yes, so it is the same in English. Whenever you design a lesson, you have different activities, you have different tasks, 
Yes, you can have, for example, I don't know, it, it doesn't matter the, the, the level you are teaching. We have the chance to do different activities. Let's continue for the next one. This is not exactly to talk about the one who created this, but all of us have mistakes. Yes, nobody's perfect. But the problem is, Eddie, go ahead, use the microphone. Eddie, yes. oops, you had the microphone open, you can use it or please mute it. Okay, I'm going to mute it. I guess it's not working. Okay, so I was saying, it's not only to it's not only it's not for criticizing the creator. No, this is for the mistakes we have. We should, and I guess uh, we must check mistakes or whatever we uh, are using in a in a in an exercise with someone else or using different tools. For example, I can type this at, uh, using the Microsoft Word program, and then the program is going to help me. Yes, the program gives me some possible solutions, but at least the program signals or, or uh, how can I say, highlights the mistakes I have. So, this is the idea to use tools, technology, for helping us and helping our students. Yes, as somebody said, yes, we should take care of the mistakes. Nobody's perfect, yes, but we should be careful with this kind of uh, exercises. Okay, let's continue to the next one. For example, I, this is a good exercise. It's, I like it. I like this kind of word search. Somebody says uh, that it is uh, for increasing vocabulary, but I guess it is, it is also uh, a kind of a reading comprehension exercise. Why? Because students are reading and trying to find words. So in a way, they are reading words at the word level, but it is really comprehension. So what about in this exercise, for example, you have uh, to find five words. I don't know if the words are related. They might be. But what about if I, if I find different words? You can, you can see different words. So is it going to be helpful for our students? Do you get my point? Hello, are you listening to me? Okay, thank you, sorry. I thought I was alone. So, that's the question. How do you think the your students will feel if they do find different words and that system says, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong? You're gonna feel like frustrated Yelling, go ahead, please. You had a microphone open. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, I think what you said is if they, if we just ask them to look for any kind of word, they, they will uh, not know um, what they're looking for and they want to. Like you say, or well maybe it could be better like look for fruits or for a specific topic, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, completely. I completely agree with you. We should give clear instructions for our students. They need to know exactly what to find. As I said, this is an exercise. I, I like it. I really like it. I love doing these kind of exercises. And our students really like doing these kind of exercises, but we need to be careful with this kind of a mistakes, sometimes uh, uh, mistakes we make, uh, these things safe because we are not focusing our attention on the content, we are focusing our attention in the design. And I know this is, these are your first steps, and this is going to be getting better and better and better. I guess when you're in the seventh grade, you're going to be really, really uh, technology, I mean, designers. You're going to have a lot of experience in designing exercises using technology. Okay, let me go to the next one. I was, I said, for example, this one is another one that I like. Yes, 
But I guess sometimes we fail in telling our students exactly what to do. We don't tell our students what we expect from, from them and from this exercise. And when I did it, well, it was kind of easy for me, but is it the same for our students? Nadia, go ahead, please use the microphone. Nadia, I can see your hand. You can use the microphone, only unmute it, please. Uh -huh, yes, nice sweater, sorry. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Hello? Hello? Okay, actually, I, I try. Yes, you hear me? Yes. Okay. I tried to do this exercise like a couple of times and I had I had a little trouble doing it because the instructions were not clear and so I, that's just what I wanted to do that we need to be careful with that because most of our students won't understand what we're trying to to assess them. Uh -huh, you're right. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Remember, guys, this is, I mean, these agents are for you, not for the teacher. So you should be the one conducting the lesson, the, the session. Jorge, go ahead, please. I guess you have room with the microphone, Jorge. Yeah, you muted it. No, Jorge has muted his microphone. Okay, go ahead, Jorge. Yeah, I was saying that I find it very difficult to, to, to find the instructions that are, are not very clear. I don't agree with uh, Nadia. Okay, thank you. Yes? Actually, when, for example, when I have, as I said, I like these kind of exercises. Yes, I don't like too much grammar, but students really need to do some exercises in grammar, and this kind of a, this is a kind of a interesting, funny exercise for them. But we need to be clear. Uh, we need to make sure that they really understand. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, this is another one. Yes, this is a great exercise. And the first time I started to use this kind of exercises uh, with the hot potatoes, I thought my students were not going to like it, but most of them liked it, like it, especially uh, with the hot potatoes, can you, where you can use uh, images, sounds, and, and videos. But also in, in, at the Duca Play, it's okay. But the, the question is, this is a great exercise. Yes, I like it. But the question is, are you focusing? What is the objective? Vocabulary or pronunciation? That's another point we must take into account. Now, this is it. Go ahead. You had the microphone open. Okay. Actually, this I did this exercise. Um, this is based on a previous knowledge. I, I used this exercise after I, I worked on the vocabulary with the kids in the classroom. We worked on the pronunciation and this is like the last exercise I did just to, for them to, but to not only understand the pronunciation but also to remember how to, how to spell the word. Okay, I was, now I see it. It's like reinforced. Yes, Okay, thank you, thank you. For <laughs> okay. Okay. Eddie has a question. Eddie, is a question for Nadia or for me? Okay, Nadia, you have a question. 
how do you work, how do you uh, do exercises for pronunciation in your class? The question is for you. Eddie has a question. Okay. Um, first, uh, well, in the book, we use uh, a CD. And first, the, the students listen to the CD to understand the pronunciation. And a few days, uh, a few days before, I start doing uh, exercises like playing, um, for example, hot potato. And they have to, whoever has the ball has to say the word correctly and stuff like that. So I do some previous exercises for them to to understand the pronunciation and then I do this type of exercise so they can uh, spell the, the word correctly. Thank you. Eddie, I'm going to give you the microphone if you want to. Go ahead, please, you have the microphone. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. You promised you were going to buy a new microphone, didn't you? Okay. Well, <laughs> it's okay. Okay, guys, uh, there are many ways to work on pronunciation. Actually, you're going to have a subject on how to teach pronunciation and vocabulary in the fourth semester. That's going to be a really interesting subject. And well, it depends sometimes, for example, we teach the textbook. Sometimes we teach uh, what we think our students need. In pronunciation, for example, could be, you could be teaching intonation, you could be using, you could be teaching syllable stress, word stress, etc. And I guess technology is a great tool for students. But the problem is that sometimes there are some tools not free for us to use them. For example, uh, let me write the name of that software. You may, you may get it cracked or from someone. This is a great piece of software for students to see if they are pronouncing words um, in, a, in an acceptable way. The problem is that this piece of software is kind of expensive. I don't know, perhaps it's about $1,000. I don't have the money. And if I have the money, well, it could be for my private classes. But anyway, there's only one way to use technology in improving our students' pronunciation. What about the next one? You said that you haven't used the activities with your students, but what about, have you embedded it? I mean, did you embed your exercises on, on your, in your blog? You have the microphone? Is it possible to embed? Yes, go ahead, please. Melina? Um, yes, good, um, good night to everybody. Uh, I, I was just wanting to make a comment about this. I am, well, in the school where I'm working, we are about to start the bimestral exams. And I am planning to, we, we have to do a study guide for our students. And we, um, in the study guide, we're supposed to write a whole bunch of exercises and everything to help them uh, prepare for the exam. So what, what I am planning is to use my blog and just write the, the URL in the study guide and they would have to go and do the exercises. But is there a way that, would they have to open an account so I can see if they did the exercise? Or could it be... Or is there like no way of me knowing if they did it or not? Mm, that's an interesting question. Uh, when when your students go to go and do the exercise in the, in the blog, there is no way for you to know if they really did the exercise in the blog. What you can ask to your students is, uh, okay, guys, I want you to go there and do the exercises, and when you finish, you can print the screen 
and send them to my email inbox, for example. That's what I do with my students. But actually, if students go there, the only way to know they were there is by writing comments, as some of you did. But it's not exactly what you are asking. You are asking to make sure the students are doing the exercises. Yes. No, I guess uh, we should have we should have a, a, a virtual space. I told you, I guess, two weeks ago about chamilo.org. You can have your virtual classroom in that place. Or if you want to spend about uh, 460 pesos a year, you can, you can have your own um, virtual classroom at a place using the platform Moodle. This is the second part of tonight's session. Yes, you, well, I'll tell you later. But anyway, for example, this is not a commercial, but uh, I have a, I have a, a place uh, in the internet for my students, uh, and I i am renting a virtual space from newbox.net. I only pay about 457 pesos a year about a year and 10 cents or 20 cents per day. I mean, a, a pe one peso and 50 cents per, year, per per day, less than that. But anyway, this is only, the blog is only to have students do the exercises, but not exactly to have a control of who is or who, who is not doing the exercise at the blog. Perhaps this is the answer you were expecting, isn't it, Nadia? Uh, No, oh, sorry, Melina. Um, thank you, Eddie. I'm sorry. I forgot who was it. I'm sorry, Melina. Yes. So, you can ask the students to do that. Ask your students to do the exercise, and when they finish the exercise, they can print the screen, and then they paste that image at Word, in Word. If they go to Photoshop or Paint, you are not going to see the date at the bottom of the screen. When students print the screen, you get exactly what they have on the screen. Of course, if your students are using iPads, it's not possible to do that. I'm talking about PCs or laptops or netbooks, but not on, on, on tablets. Okay, so uh, I would like you to to, to go and try to uh, modify your exercises, you can put, it is possible for you to go and modify it. You can edit all your exercises that Educa play. So you can go and shape, make any necessary changes and you can insert them in your blog. Try to, I don't know, encourage students to go and, and do the exercises on the blog to use it, give it a, a real use. Let, let me continue if you don't have any, if you don't have questions about this. Just look for the embedding. All the exercises that are possible to embed, they have an embedding code as the bulky. Yes. So just look for the, the code and you copy it and you paste it in your blog. Now you know how to do it. Okay, guys. The second part. What about a VLE? What is a VLE? Mayra, uh, you don't have a microphone. Erika, I'm giving you the microphone. You can use it. Thank you, Eddie, but I'm not saying what it, what does VLE stand for. I'm saying what it is. I'm asking you what a visual learning environment is. I'm giving the microphone to Erika, but all of you have the microphone. You can use it. Jorge and Ivan, you have the microphone. Jorge. Yeah, teacher. I think place that we use to learn and, and use it for learning with a computer or all this kind of 
skills that we have. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Go ahead, Hasiel. I think that it's like uh, our platform on the VA. Uh, it has, well, it, 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 our platform is really complete. Well, I, uh, I was reading a uh, paper. I, I realized how, how complete is, uh, is the platform that we are using in the VA because we have many tools, like uh, we have the chance or the opportunity to to send messages between us and between student, student or student teacher. So I think I, I thought in in the platform when I read the document. Okay, thank you, Geraldine. You wanted to use the microphone. Go ahead, please. Yes, continue. Okay. Uh, well, uh, virtual learning um, environment. What I understood it was about, um, it's like a package of tools that we use to learn um, along this way. It's like, of course, the computer is the internet, but there's something else. It's the, the website, the links, the email, the platform, all the stuff that we are using. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Ivan, go ahead. I'm sorry, I cannot listen well. Very, very low. Okay. If you if you are able to see what Hasiel wrote, this is a great website for the students so they can you, they can go and and listen to the words they don't know exactly how to pronounce. It's a great website. I use it with my students. Erika, thank you for your answer. Okay, I have a question for everyone. Is this tool something like a, a virtual learning environment with a queue? Okay, I'm going to repeat, repeat the question. Is WISA Q? Is WISA Q a learning environment? I see it, you say yes. Why? Why, Eddie? Erika? Go ahead, Nadia. You have the microphone. Um, yes, definitely is a, a VLE um, learning um, because in this type of, of tool we can um, give our ideas, we can share, um, as you say, we can raise our hand, we can participate, so I do think it's considered a VLE tool, definitely. Thank you. And what about uh, what Geraldine said? She said, VLE is something like a package of tools. Can I say something? Yes. Go ahead, Melina, please. Um, I, I would like to. I would like to contribute a little to what um, my my email said. Yes, I think it is a virtual learning environment because it has 
different tools that allows us to, to learn online. For example, the communication. We are doing that on the chat. We are doing that while we speak on, on our microphones. It also ha gives us an opportunity to share. Well, we don't actually do it yet. I guess we, there must be a way that we can also put slides or like you're doing with the PowerPoint presentation. And it, it's also, it also gives the tool for the tutor so he can monitor in some way if we are in class, what time we log in to class, how much time we were in class. So yes, of course, it's a virtual learning environment. Thank you. That's right. Actually, I didn't use all the tools we have on, on WizAQ. Uh, I, I invite you to do a session among you, you, not your students. Among you, uh, you can, now you have an account, you can run a session to see all the tools. For example, I can, I can share the screen, but sometimes it depends on the computers our students have. Uh, sometimes the, the screen is kind of frozen. It depends on the, on the Windows, uh, the operating systems we're using, Windows, Linux, uh, Apple, Macintosh, etc. Yes. So I can have different tools. For example, I have never used uh, the board. If you go, for example, at the top of your screen, you might see a pencil. Yes, for example, in this moment, I'm going to give the pencil to Yeldin. It is a tool. How can I use a pencil? Well, you can use something using the whiteboard. For example, let's see. Not exactly an academic writing. Yes, what I did. But you can use that, the tool. Sometimes you can ask students questions and they can go. And I guess Geraldine is able to see the pencil and now she's writing. Yes, I'm going to give everyone the pencil. Let's let's play a little bit with the pencil. Okay, guys. You have the pencil. You can write on the screen. Okay, Diana. That's great. Nadia. And if you go, for example, a little bit down, you can have some uh, something like a, a page you select it and then you can you can type but as you can see when everybody has the pencil is something like a mess yes or no okay thank you yeah Okay, see? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take that pencil from you. If you wanna write something, I can give it to you. But it's the same as you said in the chat box. As I said I can I can use many tools with, with this um, um, learning environment. I accepted it. it is a teaching environment as well as a learning environment. Okay, yeah, sorry, I'm going to take that, uh, I'm going I'm to go back to the presentation. Yeah, I agree with you, Eddie, they would go crazy, imagine. But anyway, uh, for example, I have a friend and she never knew about this, this tool, this platform, this website. When I told her what she could do, she teaches mathematics and she used it. And she said, wow, this is great. My students can do a lot of operations on the screen, but imagine it's going to take it, it's going to take the students too long if they use only the pencil. But if you give all the options, they can, they can do many things. Okay, let's continue. Another question for you. And you have the microphone. You can give me the answer, please. It's a blog, a VLE. Why, Hasil? Because we can share some exercises with our students and uh, they can 
show us the progress that they are uh, having in class doing the, those exercises. I think that. Okay, thank you. I'm seeing what Melina wrote. She said that it is not completely a VLE. And also, it calls my attention what Erica wrote. Yes, it is. It's technology. Mm. Okay, the problem is that Erica doesn't have a microphone. But anyway, Melina, can you please tell us why it's not completely a VLE for you? Yes. Well, I think it's not completely a virtual learning environment because, well, as I said before, it doesn't have all of the tools. Like one of them is, is the, the ability for the tutor to be checking on, on the students. And it's funny because that kind of answered my question too, the, the first one that I had. If I could actually see if my students are logging, are um, going into my blog and doing the activities. So if a tutor can't do that, then I don't think it is a learning environment because then how would the students be evaluated in a way? And not all technology is a, a learning environment either, in my opinion. Okay. Do you see my question? I mean, everyone and only Melina. Uh, is it teacher control? I mean, sometimes we have the, the idea that something is uh, student-centered, but sometimes it is not exactly. Sometimes it is teacher-centered. Eddie, you, I agree with you, as well as with Manina, yes? Uh, but we need to take into account some, some kind of, sometimes, for example, not exactly, we don't have to, to, to have the control of what students do, for example. I guess I asked you this question, have you heard about the PLE? A PLE is a personal learning environment. And it's the environment students create when they are in the social media. But anyway, go ahead please. Jorge, you had the microphone. Yes, sir. Uh, I guess it is a, a beautiful learning uh, yeah because it's a tool that we can use it and um, I think not all the tools are the same maybe some of them have a uh, different I don't know something like that but I think it's, uh, they are not the same okay thank you Geraldine go ahead please you raise your hand and then Ivan well now I'm changing my mind I'm sorry I think I'm, I'm changing my mind. Yes, yeah, it could be, because maybe in this blog we just can uh, assess participation. It doesn't matter uh, how many times they get into or, or if they did it correct. It's just participation or just uh, trying to, to answer or exercise what it could be. Okay, thank you. But this is not, not a test. Don't feel bad. if you. This only remember the ideas to learn from each other. Yes, I may be wrong. Yes, maybe it is not a blog. I mean, it's not a VLE. But anyway, uh, Ivan, you have the microphone. And then Melina, because you wrote something interesting. A blog is a tool in a VLE, but not a VLE itself. Okay? I, I like that. Ivan, and then Melina. Okay. Uh, teacher, can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Yes. I, I just want to say that... Uh, Look what you're saying. Is a blog a virtual learning environment? I believe that a blog is a virtual learning environment because, um, because you are learning to uh, virtually, you know? It doesn't mean that the blog has to have uh, like a password to get in. So I believe that the blog is a virtual learning. I believe that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Melina? I like that what you wrote. A blog is a tool in a VLE, but not a VLE itself. Go ahead, please. You have the microphone. Yes, well, I, 
I'm sticking to my opinion about it because it's a tool that we can use in, in the virtual learning environment, but it's not by itself uh, a virtual learning environment because it's not, it doesn't have all the tools that are supposed to be in a VLE. Um, I read about the PLE and for a personal learning environment, then I guess it could be used. And then I saw um, something that Maida wrote that I think it's a place where students can learn, not necessarily being evaluated. And I agree, you, you're not going to be evaluated. But in one of the forums that we had uh, this week or last week in another course, uh, most of the people wrote that one of the expectations that we have is to be receiving assessment. And in a blog, I think it's kind of difficult to get personalized um, feedback from the teacher. So. Yes, I think it's a tool that, that can be used in a VLE, but it's not by itself a VLE. Okay, thank you. That's great. I like this. Anyone else? This is the best way to learn, guys. So please participate, contribute. Okay, let me show you the next slide. Go ahead, please. Go ahead, Gabby. Hello. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to add to what Melina said, that uh, the VLE has some uh, characteristics, some uh, things that are, uh, uh, well, the characteristic. <laughs> and I think the blog uh, doesn't have them. The blog is a tool that could be part of a virtual learning environment, but not a virtual learner environment by itself. Um, mm, I think that it can be very useful, but not um, the communication. I think that is the, the main characteristic that the blog doesn't have. Maybe they can add and leave some messages, and but they don't have the uh, tools like Dropbox or like uh, sending documents, all those things that, the, uh, as an example, the Chamilo uh, platform does have. Okay, thank you. I like it. Anyone else? Okay, have you heard about Web 2.0 tools? It's a question for everyone. And you can use a microphone. Web 2.0 tools. Okay. Let me show you this, the next one. The next slide. As Melina said, this is a VLE, it is a package of tools, and this is only an opinion of many authors, yes? These are the tools. Uh, VLEs should have, yes, as you said, some of you mentioned already, yes, notice boards, uh, course outline, etc., etc., and more. I, I would add many more uh, tools. Web 2.0 tools are tools that are available for everyone, for, I don't know, having fun, for different reasons, yes, but Web 2.0 tools are hundreds of tools we can use mostly in the cloud. In the cloud is in the internet, you know that, yes? So those tools are available for all of us in the cloud for different reasons. I'll, I'll give you next week uh, some web websites where you can go and see too many web tools you can use in the classroom. For example, is the notice board important? In a, in a VLE, in a classroom, in a virtual classroom? Okay, can you please give me some ideas how I can use a notice board, a notice board in a, in a, in a classroom, in a VLE? Okay. Okay, you would add Voki to this, to the tools. That's great. 
okay? But the question, how can I use a notice board virtually? Remember you had the microphone. Geraldine, I see you were typing. The question is not a, it's not a test. Yeah, sorry. Uh, go, go ahead, please. I think we can use a notice board, like a, to I don't know to write our announcements, um, any kind of announcements, like from the tutor to the students, or the students maybe to the tutors, Something like that. Or am, am I wrong? Okay. Yes, you are right. Yes, actually, as I said, this not exactly. Uh, a question for a test. No, this is to gather idea from everyone. I can use a, a notice of for different things. For example, uh, usually uh, at school we have bulletin boards. What do we use bulletin boards for? It's a calendar, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. For people inviting to other people, sometimes to socialize. Yes, or even for selling, for buying. Invited to a party, etc. Yes. Okay. Another question: Can I have a notice board uh, in the blog? Is it possible? Geraldine, you have a microphone. You can use it. I just want to say that I don't. <laughs> okay, question for everyone. Have you heard of Wall Wisher? Okay, let me show you the next slide. Wall Wisher is a website in the internet uh, exactly to do what you can see on the screen. You can use wall wisher as a wall. They call it as a wall. You can make your wall. You can use it as a notice board. You can teach. You can have. You can bookmark uh, favorite websites. You can use a wall wisher for that. Yes. Okay, guys. I invite you to go to this website. Yes. And I want you to do something with that bulletin board. You have lots of ideas at the website. It is, it is uh, very useful, but we need to do something like a little change in your blog. I'm going to send you on Monday a brief tutorial on how to modify the screen you have on your blog. Yes, I'm talking about the blog at Blogger, Blogspot. It is not possible to do that if you have another website for a blog like Google Plus, like um, any other blog. blog. Blogspot or Blogger allows us to do some changes. So I'm going to teach you that. But I want you to go in the weekend, if you have time, and play with this uh, World Witcher. You need to get an account. Yes. And then uh, play with that. And then you find, go and find out the embedding code and embed it in your in your blog and you're gonna see that it's gonna be kind of incomplete so I'll send you that tutorial on Monday it's not, it's not going to be on the in the learning path it's gonna be in your account I'll send it to you uh, in the announcements and also I'll send it to you mm, through your email addresses but the idea is I want you I invite you to go and play with that with that tool so use it and see what you can do and for homework, it's the best time. It's the first time I give you uh, an assignment for homework. For homework, I, I I want you to send me. I don't know. Send me to my email. Send me to my email. No, better, better. I'm gonna change that a little bit. This I'm gonna post a wall from Wall Witcher in the in the learning pass for Monday, and then I want you to go there, and I want you to type ideas how to use the wall yes for so everyone can learn and get the most out of this tool it's an amazing tool and also it's free 
So, any questions? We are on time, exactly one hour. Okay, guys, so the... Yeah, I, I will do it, Melina. I'll, I'll, I'll have a... I'm going to do it right now, so you can go and, and you can start posting notes. It's like posting uh, post-its in the, in the, in the world, like a, like a cork board, pizarrón de corcho, they said in Spanish. So I, I put it right now, after this session is over, and then you can go and provide ideas for everyone so we can learn from everyone. That's the idea, to learn from each other. Okay, guys, if you don't have any questions, I guess it is time for this session to be over. I thank you for being here again. And in a, in about 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I'll put the, the wall in week six. So have a good night. Enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you online, guys. Thank you, everyone. And please, get a microphone. I want to listen to you. I don't want you to uh, get tired of, uh, tired of listening to me only. Okay, guys, I'm going to count to three. And thank you, Jorge, for everyone. I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to close this. Have a good night, have a nice weekend, and I'll see you online. Bye-bye. One, two, three. Bye-bye.